Coming in just high or just shy of the 11,000 pound mark. 315 updated, improved wolf pack here at Halid RV of Coldwater, Michigan. And it's easy to overlook some of the things they've done because it was already so good. They've really just kind of tightened it up a little bit and really taken it over the top. Like, take a look inside here. It's got just a, a beautiful, warm, normal RV interior, but this one gives us a 12 foot garage and it is a 102 inch wide body fifth wheel toy hauler, which means maximum living space, maximum loading space. Couple that with things like a standard dual 15,000 BTU air conditioner, all power jacks, all kinds of good things on here. This is a really pound for pound, smart, strong series of fifth wheel toy hauler that I've always thought is it really appeals to like uh, the working person. If you still kind of punch a clock for a living, um, you uh, haven't right, you know, hit that retirement point yet, but you want to go out and get a little dirty, have a little fun, you're going to like what you see here. Now, like almost any real true toy hauler, you've got those twin kind of flip over sofa beds below. You've got the full on kind of power drop bed above. And that's what's kind of cool about toy haulers. They can give us a lot of different functions. Like we've got it kind of in what I'm gonna call kind of daytime party mode right now. And if you notice, you can sort of convert these little benches around. If you're looking for more of a three adult seating space, or if you're looking for more of a two adults with a place to set your drink while you're kind of chewing the fat and shooting the breeze, you can do that too. But naturally, when it comes to toy haulers, one of the main questions is, uh, you know, what kind of space do I have in here? So let's get these things out of the way and take a look. And as we're doing that, this is actually a quick opportunity to show you the newer, easier method they have for locking and unlocking that top bed up there. Wolfpack has adopted, and a lot of brands have, but some still haven't. A lot of them still use those little, you gotta, Put the little rods through the thing and it's kind of a pain in the neck with a wolf pack it's very easy if you want to unlock the top bed you flip that little brass job in there like that if you want to leave it in the up locked position that's all you have to do now if you can't remember which one's which they actually give us a nice little handy pictogram here and uh you know you only got two options so if it doesn't do the thing you want back the bed down a little bit flip the lever the other way and it's pretty much going to do the other thing you're looking for and here's what we're talking about. We've got it in the unlock the top bed position. You hear that clickety clack? Now when we start to lower it, it all comes with us. So you don't have to like climb on top of a ladder or something to try to pull a, a push rod out of there. It's just all simple and easy now. And a quick little pause for the cause allows us to get to see the fact that you have the option of riding down the road with those sofa benches sideways against the wall or uh, in parallel to that upper bed. So you have maximum loading height whenever you need it or maximum loading width whenever you need it. Now these things are plenty tall to walk under. And I'll tell you, this RV has a 12 foot long garage and it is a wide body. So you've got at least a, a good solid eight feet here, actually technically about eight two between uh, wall panel to wall panel. Beyond that, if you're looking, there's 106 different measurements that you could potentially get for a client here. And I have tried in the past to measure the life out of these things. And I have found that no matter what I do, I never seem to have the exact measurement the next client's looking for. So if you have a specific uh, ATV, kayak, or something or other you want to load in here, you want to make sure this RV has enough room for your stuff, please measure your stuff call our team with the measurements that you need to fit and we are happy to walk out here and hand measure everything to ensure that it fits for you but unfortunately proactively i've learned that i i just can't cover them all i i, I apologize now there is a drop down screen wall back here it actually has a nice little zipper split in the middle you can use it for airflow you can block it off you can do all kinds of things for it and as long as these uh sofa benches are out of the way you see that you do have these cool snap-on blackout shades back here too you're going to blot the sun and get the nosy neighbors away you can and you will see plenty plenty of outlets in the walls over here, including some handy USB plugs as well on both sides of the RV. Now this over here, that is where the uh, Moride stable step thing for the rear patio will be located. And that is a newer addition at the time of this filming. That's something Wolfpacks generally did not have. Now, as long as everything else is out of the way, I want to make a quick note of that extra wide smoky glass entry door right there. That is really operates very similarly to the smoky glass that's on the front of both entry doors. We can clearly see out of here. When you're in the living room, you can see into the garage pretty well, although 
the uh, glass on that door is more of a two-way smoky than a one-way smoky, if uh, you're paying attention to smoky and the bandit, that is. And uh, you see that those snap-off shades, you know, if you just want to kind of hang them down so you don't have to eat up storage space, they're pretty easy to handle. Now, you may have noticed the D-rings here. There's just ton. There's 15 tie-downs in this garage. And what I love about that, you're never having to fight for tie downs with the other person. Like, if you have two fully dressed Harleys or Gold Wings or whatever, you know, your preference is in here, you, you never have to fight for loading space, which is nice. And you may notice something that 315 Wolfpack did not used to have was a little washer dryer hookup back here. And obviously, they've got all of those things handled now. So let's get the, uh, the you know, twin kind of sleeper arrangements dropped here so you can see what we're talking about. And remember, if you ever want to lock that top bed back in the up position, all you're going to do is flip all these little flapper doodle jobbies that way, and then start raising the actual sofa. And the power lift itself will push that thing up there, and it will lock it against the ceiling for you. So you never again have to wrestle with these things, which, as a person who touches and handles probably far more fifth wheel toy haulers than the average bear, <laughs> I'm certainly happy to see this. Now, chances are when you do have it in the double queen bed sleeper mode, you're probably going to have the rear ramp door closed. Otherwise, that would be a chilly, chilly evening, and you'd be putting on quite the free show for the neighbors. <laughs> Get you up here so you can see this. It is like two queen beds, and that's what's cool about this. These are great alternative bunkhouses, but they're good for more than just kids. This is a multi-adult and easy six-adult sleeping model without ever using any of the seating inside as extra sleeping space. That's one of the things about toy haulers. It's almost, I mean, they are, they're easily one of the most flexible types of RVs out there. And by the way, this RV does include a handy little uh, folding leg, very lightweight, easy to move around, kind of picnic dining table. You could use it inside by the sofa, obviously out here. You could put it on the ground for a little picnic patio time. And it's made with the same sealed edge press membrane countertop material you see elsewhere. So if you leave it outside and overnight, you forget about it. Even if it rains a little bit, no big deal. Take a towel, dry it off, bring it back in, and it stores very nicely either under that overhead mattress or you can put it under the master bed because there's full easy lift storage up there as we'll see in a bit too. And I tell you, I've long been a fan of the Wolfpack series and they've just recently, last couple of years, they've gotten so, so good. They're like the dollar for dollar, pound for pound, I think biggest bang for your buck toy hauler that you can really find out there in the fifth wheel segment. There's some very good products out there. We carry different brands of fifth wheel toy haulers here at Halo RV. But if you look at what you get for your money, it's tough to beat a Wolfpack. They've got, you know, good fridge space, standard on their fifth wheels, double air conditioning, all power jacks, they're generator ready, like uh, washer dryer prep, you know, a lot of those big hitter features, those big defining qualities that you just absolutely borderline, you know, like demand for your money, which I think is reasonable. Um, features in a in a toy hauler they they're all here they just don't do more than they have to and the result is something that is just like i said pound for pound a smart smart buy and one of the first things i kind of always appreciate about them is the interior decor because it just feels like a normal rv it doesn't feel like a motocross extreme experience and if that's what you're looking for, that's perfectly fine. It just means that maybe a uh, wolf pack is not the ideal fit for your wants and needs. If what you're looking for, though, is like, I always kind of call these the, uh, uh, you know, the working man, working woman's fifth wheel toy hauler. They're made for who I call Larry Lunch Bucket and Jane Six Pack. People like me, whose paycheck sometimes still depends on the weather, you know, um, I want to spend a lot of my money on the toys. I don't want to go broke buying the hauler. And if that sounds right to you, and I think Wolfpack's probably a very good fit. Now, the thing is, if we're looking around, this has got a lot of cabinet space. And actually, I think that's one of the underrated qualities about the 315 Wolfpack is all of its cabinet space and capacity. It's very easy to overlook because at a glance, it's all so simple, calm, kind of tucked away. Like, oh, you're like, oh, cool, a nice little, you know, backsplash and whatnot. But the thing is, when you open all this up, you see that there's actually a lot more going on here. And I'm going to see if I can cover all the storage in here in one shot without tripping over stuff or hitting my head on any doors that are open, so wish me luck. If this footage makes it out, then obviously I hit my head and woke up. If it doesn't, then I didn't make it, folks. <laughs> 
Uh, I, kind of a Cherokee thing. Uh, you see a lot more in their travel trailers, but in the kitchen, two big drawers instead of one or uh, two or three small drawers. Just if you got the bigger spatulas and stuff, it's handy. Place for a wastebasket there. And that sink cover over top of that black stainless farm sink is something that I love. Now, remember that backsplash around the uh, oven area that we talked about? That is actually a magnet quick release cutting board either a uh, prep table or serving kind of table. It can do uh, a couple different things. This uh, faucet is high rise. It is a sprayer model. And if we're looking behind it, kind of right through it right there, you can see some easy to reach power outlets. Now you might also notice you've got a good kitchen breeze window, but you also have a full viewing window in the entry door. We kind of talked about that in the garage. But overhead here, you might be wondering, why is there that little dead pocket right there? Well, around the corner is actually where our command panel, uh, panel, what? What? Panel is located. What am I even getting on today? And there's a lot of wiring going on here. So they didn't want cargo to smash it up. Now, one of the cool things you can do is uh, you can actually sync this thing to your phone. And uh, any of the stuff that you can do off this panel here, you could do off your phone too. You don't have to though. That's what's nice is they still give you switches for all this stuff. Like if you want to activate, deactivate the uh, over the cabinet accent lighting, you can do all of that from here. Your water heater, your water pump. Speaking of things, uh, this RV also does have 12 volt tank heaters. And that's a nice standard thing you find on the Wolfpacks. Enclosed underbelly, tank heaters. It's a solid extended season rig. It is very tricky to really massively heavily insulate a, a toy hauler because of the garage area and the presence of a fuel station. There's some fire code reasons for that. But back to the rest of the overhead storage, you can see other than that little dead pocket I was telling you about, there's even a big section uh, above the microwave. And I like how they've done some glass work on some of these uh, door uh, things here in, in recent seasons. Previously, those just weren't there. And it dresses it up nicely. Now, there is obviously that garage to living room exchange wall. And above that, since this is not a loft model, it is just a nice extra chunk of storage space there. Now, I've got all the zebra shades pulled right now because the sunshine's not being friendly to us. The time of year here in Michigan and when most of the RVs tend to arrive, it is just one of those things I have to contend with. Now, um, I've certainly heard some feedback, and, and I hope you appreciate the candor here, folks. I always try to be fair. Not everybody's a fan of these zebra shades. But here's the thing, folks. That's what I call screwdriver work. Maybe you love them. I, like, personally, I think they're fine. But I know that not everyone's a fan. And if you don't like them, if you don't like the uh, the roller method on here, let me kind of show you what I'm talking about in case you're not familiar, because maybe you're new to this. You see how there's kind of see-through panels, but you can also, you know, line them up and block the sun out. I like that. I like the use and the function. I know it's not everybody's jam, though, baby. And the thing is, if that's not your thing, no big deal. It's what I call screwdriver work. If you want different shades, all you got to do is call us. That's that's easy, folks. That's just easy stuff to do. Frankly, that's probably the kind of thing you could go to a home goods store, measure a couple windows out, and I bet you could tackle those yourselves pretty easy. They're not hard. But back to storage. Full drawers below the dinette. Now, the dinette can, of course, fold down into a sleeper, but you don't have to here. And similarly... There's like a full-on storage trunk below the sofa, which I think is a very handy thing. Now, that's not going to be for everyday storage, but if you are uh, going to store some extra blankets or something like that, that's a pretty handy space there. Now, uh, in this little corner, they just they didn't want to waste it, so they just opened it up and made it a handy cabinet space there. And similarly, if I can avoid tripping on that drawer I left open, this is a tripping hazard. Don't do this yourselves, by the way. I, I do my own stunts. <laughs> A little bonus storage above the entertainment center there. But closing that up and giving us a look at everything here, you see those handy uh, coat hooks right by the door. That is very, very smart. It's nice and wide open there. Plenty of room if you need to come in and kick off some boots, you can. Now, you see that electric space heating fireplace with your TV hookups right above that. That is directly across from the sofa. So if what you're looking for is easy viewing, if you want to add a screen to this, there's plenty of space there. And something that I actually really appreciate is the fact that they didn't frame it out. They didn't frame out the TV space. So if you want a big, wide screen, you can do that. A little caution, though. Don't make the TV so wide that it'll interfere with that bathroom door just past the entertainment center. Now, if you don't care about the bathroom door, that's fine, but I think you're going to want it. We'll talk about that uh, a little more in just a minute. 
And a normal Cherokee kind of thing, but I love how well they do it here in Wolfpack as well. USB plugs. We saw them by those uh, power up down sofa benches in the back, but basically anywhere you sit or sleep, you're going to have them. This is a sliding pocket privacy door getting us upstairs. And this right here is why the second door, I think, to the bathroom matters. In the olden days, when this was first called the 305 Wolfpack, before it was the 315, it did not have this door. So if a guest wanted to use the bathroom, they had to go into the bedroom, about face, forward march, and go to the potty. And when you're sitting here, you're sleeping, I don't think anybody wants people walking in another room. That is weird. Now, it's like, I, you know, I've lived with my wife for a number of years now, but if I'm sleeping and I wake up and she's getting around in the morning, I, I feel guilty. Anybody else, like, she's up, shouldn't I be up? Now, that being said, I don't feel guilty guilty um <clears throat> enough i i go right back to sleep and i sleep just fine but uh, you know for a moment there's a moment there anyway <laughs> anybody else is it just me anyway up top here second centralized air conditioner wolf pack fifth wheels always have dual fifteen thousand btu coleman quiet air conditioners standard Used to be optional for a number of years. We've built them like this for years, but they find you know what? We're just this is going to be standard. When they kind of clarified the Wolfpack Platinum thing, that's sort of uh, what happened here. Now this is uh, a Camp King, and once again, I, I hope you appreciate where I'm. I, like I'm not trying to just schmooze something over on you here. This is a short bed. It is a Camp King. However, they leave you tons of room here. If you want to upgrade to a full 70 by 80 King instead of the 70 by 74 King that we have currently, you can easily do so and still walk around the bed. So why do they do this? And the answer is so that you can um, spend as little as possible getting exactly the sleeping space you want. It's why all manufacturers generally use, frankly, crappy beds. <laughs> Again, hope you appreciate the candor. Um, <laughs> why? Because there is no one mattress that is suitable for every single person. And if they ever tried to sell you one of these with no mattress in it, you would just immediately assume that they were cheap corner cutters. You'd, you'd probably never give them the opportunity to explain. So they put something here to give you the idea. It's king capable. Maybe you just throw a foam top around it and call it macaroni. But that's why manufacturers do that. Now, if you're seeing over here, there's two funky boxes. Well, one is a set of household outlets on the bottom, and above that is a dual USB hub, but it does have a little hookup point if there if there's, what is it? It's like a little LTE Wi-Fi hotspot you can put in these. Now, that up front there, I think, is an interesting place for USB plugs, and if I'm being fair, um, I'll give this brand praises where they need it or where they deserve it, and, and I do feel that is a misplaced USB plug. I personally would have rather seen it over here, but perhaps there's something uh, I'm not exactly understanding. If I get my way around here, you can see that both of these side closets are, you know, well, obviously closets, but they also each have their own individual drawer on both sides of the RV. That's something that's not as obvious when you're just walking through it. Now, all Wolfpack fifth wheels are generator ready, and that is where your generator switch would be located. And it's located in here on purpose, so that if you are in bed, you wake up at night, and you need to crank on the air conditioning, you can walk over here, turn on the air conditioner, and then uh, walk over here to the thermostat and crank on the air conditioner above you. Now, what is also nice on this air unit, it is centralized to push air through the living room, but you also have a cold air dump right here. So if you just wanna drop all the air here, you can. It's definitely not a bedroom entertainment focused model, but if you want, you can throw a TV up in that corner. And we do have ourselves handy little bonus kind of additional third closet space here with a good little, I'm gonna call it like a boot box you could throw down in there. Not a beat box, boot box. Beat box is something else that's more like Anyway. <laughs> uh, corner shower, radius, so nice shoulder uh, elbow room. This is a six and a half foot tall shower, so people like me have plenty of headroom, which is always a personal favorite feature. That is a nerd preferred feature I look for in any RV I can. Like uh, a lot of Cherokees, they've got the big XL vent fan up here. A couple of towel hooks so you can let those things dry out. And this is a porcelain foot flush stool, not a plastic, uh, which they had been in some previous seasons. Now you can see that the, the whole bathroom area here is carpetless. It is going to be easy to clean. There's no vents right next uh, to like where you get out of the shower or anything. And even in here, they're still using sealed edge press membrane countertops. So if you do splash some water around, no biggie deal. And 
Finishing it off, a nice deep corner medicine cabinet so you can actually stand in the bathroom to, you know, get ready. You don't have to be with your butt halfway out into the hallway. Kind of flashing yourself to the world, you know what I mean? So we've seen her with the slide open. What about travel mode? Now one of the other things I like to do for you is show you the RV with the slides closed, or slide closed, um, as it were in this case. Now you see that if you scoot sideways a little bit, you can slip between the dinette and the uh, kitchen counter. You can get through pretty much all of the kitchen, I suppose in point of technicality. Those two little doors up there aren't exactly going to be accessible, but pretty much everything else is. So the question then becomes uh, bedroom and bathroom access, because garage access is pretty obvious. And at first glance, it doesn't pass the test. But here's the thing. If I do the old suck in the gut dad bod maneuver and go, I can scoot my way through here. Now, it's not the prettiest thing. But in a pinch, if I need to get in here, if I got to do stuff, I can get in here and I can do stuff. You know, you don't have to open the slide to get this one ready. Although, I do think it would be far more comfortable to do so. Now one more quick look with the slide open. I realize I haven't shown you the RV with the window shades opened up. Now um, again, full disclosure, you've got the massive panoramic windows there that open for airflow. Your slide side windows don't. If you appreciate that kind of decency and honesty, always knowing that you'll get fair facts and straight deals, please call our team, hit that subscribe button, join along with us here. But uh, I wanted to kind of touch on one thing. These windows are awesome for just letting in a flood of light into this living room. But someone will certainly say, and I think a reasonable question is, why aren't the windows over here on the door side of the RV? I, and, and the thing is, I, I will often say I feel that that's a miss or a shortcoming on an RV. I don't feel that's the case here. Because the 315 Wolfpack, the smallest, lightest of the Wolfpack fifth wheels, it is like this space is here for like if you need it most of the time this one's really built with the idea that you're going to be outside you're going to spend most of your time outside so why do you need windows over there and don't get me wrong i would like them to be over there but it's not making or breaking my camping experience now that's just my personal opinion if that makes sense to you great give us a call let's get you camping if it doesn't hey no sweat there's plenty of other things here, like a 325 Wolfpack will give you door side windows. It's also significantly heavier and more expensive because of what it takes to just move those windows. You can't just flip flop a floor plan and expect it to work. One of the other more recent updates is they have changed the front chassis area of their Wolfpack fifth wheel toy haulers. It is now a mini drop frame up front to make room for a generator while still offering an expanded storage capacity. And note, there's triple D rings up front and then you've got five more D rings through, I guess what you'd call the traditional or main compartment uh, area. And this is significantly expanded from where it had been in previous seasons. The magnet holdbacks make getting in and out of it simple and easy. That's something I always appreciate as a person who is in and out of bag of shores all the time. If you feel like doing some grilling, griddling, cooking, booking, whatever, you do have a gas grill quick connect down here where it's easy to reach. The stable steps making it uh, obviously sturdy to come and go, but I want to point something out. You're seeing two different types of steps. And a lot of times people go, oh, they went to those cheaper steps on the back. You have to remember what this RV is and what it's used for. This is a toy hauler. That is the door to the garage. If this had a normal set of More Rider LCI fold-up stable steps, then it would be sticking into the garage and it could potentially interfere with your loading. So these steps, which stay completely outside the RV all of the time, are a better fit for the garage area. But Wolfpack still wanted to do something for you. So they included these little fold-down stable legs for the bottom step here. And this is now not... I, I won't say it's as sturdy and stable as something like More Rider LCI Stable Step, but it is significantly improved from what it otherwise would have been. Now, uh, there is one of those drunken Uncle Josh leash latches on the back of the RV, but you see one over here by the door, too. It's a long RV, and if you got your little four-legged furry friend, you probably want to keep him close to you. Or you, you want to keep, you know, one of the kids here, and you, you got to keep one of the dogs on the back, or whatever works for you. I don't know. It's your life. You, you live it. <laughs> um, outside TV hookups here. And remember, <coughs> pardon me, how we could see out of those doors. 
but notice how you're not seeing into them. That's that kind of Invisiview thing that I like to call it. Also, what is? I think this is a 21 foot awning, if memory serves. And again, if memory serves, and I'll double check this, I believe this has a uh, like 100 gallon fresh water capacity or something like that. Um, I'll, again, I'll, I'll verify and I tell you what, I'll probably put the, uh, the specs on screen for you when I'm going through and kind of compiling all this. But I want to give you an idea here that this is something if you want to go off grid for a while, you can. Now down below, this is what we're looking like standard. These always have a 30 gallon fuel station, well a 30 gallon fuel cell that is shared between a fuel station and generator prep. However, Wolfpack naturally has a generator option. We will very often bring in multiple copies of the same Wolfpack model here at Halet RV, one with, one without the generator. Another thing that's really cool is Wolfpack has recently swapped over from the same Onan generator that everybody uses to a Yamaha. And I tell you, we are a Yamaha generator dealer here at Halet RV. We have Yamaha Techs uh, certified through Yamaha University, which is all real things, by the way. And I'm excited about it. And I'll tell you why. The Yamaha generators are lighter, they're more fuel efficient, they're easier to get parts. We can work on them as a Yamaha dealer, which terribly excites me as a service-based dealership. They come with a remote operating key fob. They have an inverter to run all of your outlets in the RV. They are awesome sauce. It's not necessarily amazing to look at, but if this was kind of striking you with something that looked a little thicker and beefier than it did in seasons past, this is why. It has a little mini drop frame here that didn't used to be there. That's what gave them the ability to have that larger front storage while still being generator capable, or you just can use it for more storage. And as long as we're tucked up in here into this front corner, you can see all of our hookups, outside shower, black flush, all located conveniently in one spot. Now, if we jump back behind the slide in the tires, you see here, we have all power stabilizer jacks standard, and they even have a handy little sewer hose tube so that you don't need to put your black tank stuff with your other stuff. Here's our uh, fuel filling area for the um, you know shared cell between the fuel station, bottom right-hand corner of the screen right now, and the generator prep, or generator as it were. Remember though, this RV is just like one of the wolf packs that we have here at Halet RV. And we will have plenty of them here that look just like this one. Uh, but again, we may build this a couple different ways. So kind of keep that in mind. Always double check our website, call our team members to make sure we have the exact one you're looking for. The uh, roof ladder, standard, attaches to the side for easy access to your uh, just polar white roofing, which keeps a lot of heat out of this RV. The uh, ramp patio system back here, I'm still kind of struggling to understand why this is optional on so many toy haulers when it seems like it's, it's something that nine out of nine customers recommend. And I don't know why I said nine out of nine, not nine out of 10, but I'm weird like that. Um, if you are a person who prefers not to have this, would you do me a favor and leave a comment and tell me what it is about the patio system that doesn't that you don't prefer? And I'm not looking to criticize anyone. I'm simply looking to better understand the various clients out there in the marketplace. And frankly, folks, you as the actual owners are the best source of feedback there could ever possibly be. I will listen to you before I listen to any manufacturer every single day of the week. Um, the uh, nice part though is we do tend to put these on here at Halet RV. That has a 3,000 pound loading rating, the ramp door does, and you have a 1,500 pound uh, load rating in the patio position. Now, if you've got some kind of little pedestals to put back under the door down here, since it's kind of just hanging out in Never Never Land, uh, doing a little Peter Pan action. <laughs> Peter Pan ramp door, that's what I'm calling it for now on. Probably not, but <laughs> uh, you can regain that 3,000 pound load rating. And those uh, cables there, it's aircraft grade cable. It's not just gonna fall apart anytime soon. Um, also, Wolfpack has recently started including these handy uh, steps for the back uh, ramp here. That's something that this brand just never did in the past. But I like that updated version of the Moride steps. It is lighter weight. And as a person who has wrestled with a lot of those set, uh, steps, setting up a lot of fifth wheel toy haulers, I'm happier for something that is lighter. And it stores against the wall. If you take a look here, it stores right against the wall in the garage. It gets up, it's out of the way. It doesn't eat up any loading space. And frankly, if you don't want to use them, you don't have to. They're just there if you want them. And I think we've pretty much covered everything here at ground level. Let's hop upstairs. And a couple more things for you here. Another good look at the dual air conditioners. Well, we've already talked about that. Dual 15s, I think, is worth re-mentioning, though. Maximum cooling power here. 
We have outfitted this with the optional Cherokee Juice Pack. And that is a simple solar package, but it actually does a lot more than you would think. Because like you hear 50 watts, you're like, pfft, why'd they even bother? Thing is, guys, I've been running that the power bed lifts, the slides, the awnings, all the lights, just off that little package, and it hasn't scratched the battery. And that's really what its job is. It's a battery maintainer. If you do go off grid, you want to run that 12 volt DC compressor fridge uh, for a longer time on a single battery. Furion did some testing with their fridges. They were getting like over a week off one battery uh, using their 12 volt fridges with just a 50 watt panel. Now this is slightly expandable. You could go to a second 50 watt panel to get 100 watts. And again, with one battery running a 12 volt fridge, they got over 17 days on Furion testing. It's pretty good. Now. Remember, you can also slap a generator in one of these and off you go. You know, I'm thinking out loud right now. I'll have to verify this. Someone's going to ask, can I put a Yamaha generator into my existing Onin Gen prepped RV? In the back of my head, I think I've asked that and I don't think you can, but that's a question we need to get answered for you. So that's something I'll go working on uh, after this video. Now up here, there's also the prep point for the LCI Wi-Fi hotspot. Let me get out of the shadows there. And I like talking about this thing for one big reason. I, I personally probably wouldn't bother messing with anything like this, but what I do like about it is you notice how the screw plate is actually on top of it. If you choose to upgrade and add the device, you're not sacrificing manufacturer's warranty because you're not actually screwing into Wolfpack structure. Little things like that. Those are the things I appreciate from a manufacturer. And if you appreciate all the in-depth information you got in this video today, please hit that subscribe button, follow along with us, and give my family owned and operated uh, facility here the opportunity to earn your business. And like so many people before you, I don't think you'll regret it. So whether you need hitching pieces, parts, trades finance, truck and trailer package deals, RV delivery, solar installs, and <laughs> everything in between, we only do everything at Halet RV. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halet camping, everyone.